Hello, welcome to Anatomy and Physiology audio series learning module number 12. This learning module will cover information in chapters uh, 22 and 23 of your text, the digestive and respiratory system. So in addition to viewing this module, I strongly recommend that you read those chapters as well uh, in order to be prepared for class. Remember that information in this learning module is fair game for exams. Um, in addition, you'll have a short quiz over the material when you get to class next time we meet. Okay, so the first, uh, we're going to start talking about the digestive system. So before we begin, I want you to watch two videos. The, the one on the top is a very nice video that um, summarizes the digestive system and what's happening as the food bolus moves along the uh, GI tract. And the second uh, video is about uh, absorption, how um, substances are absorbed from the GI tract into the blood. Okay, so this is a good big picture thing, right, that you're, uh, you're eating food in order to, to get nutrients from, those, from the food, and those nutrients are going to be absorbed from the GI tract into the blood, and then the blood is going to carry those nutrients to the cells. Right? That's one of the functions of the cardiovascular system is to carry the, carry the uh, nutrients from the GI tract to the cells, the glucose and the amino acids, um, minerals, vitamins, those sorts of things. Okay, so watch the videos and then we'll continue. Okay, so this is um, a nice summary of the digestive um, tract and all of the various parts that you are responsible for and their functions. So let's start with the mouth. The mouth breaks up food particles and it's uh, uh, of course, there's yeah, there's another function of it, and that it, uh, it helps with language. Of course, the tongue and the lips and the voice box are all, um, or the larynx are all involved in, in the production of speech. But we're basically talking about digestion here, so we're not concerned about that for that for for this particular lecture. So it breaks up food particles. Um, there are also salivary glands that are released into the mouth. Salivary glands contain an enzyme called amylase that starts digesting polysaccharides, particularly starts digesting starch. Okay, so so you got so you're chewing your food. You just ate you just ate a nice um, piece of I don't know um, a nice potato, and you're chewing it up, chewing it up, chewing it up, chewing it up with your teeth. So you're tearing it apart. It's mechanical uh, digestion, and then your salivary glands release amylase, which starts to break down the starch in the potato, actually starts breaking the bond. So depending on how long you're chewing, then you're going to swallow. That's the pharynx involved in that. Notice right there where the pharynx is, there's a nice division, right? So if the food goes into the, uh, the there's a nice fork in the road, and if the uh, food goes into the trachea, then you're in trouble because you'll, you'll choke, right? or aspirate if it happens to be fluid. So then the, flu the food uh, bolus heads down, um, the hopefully down the correct tube, down the esophagus, enters the stomach. There's a little uh, this chart, this uh, particular diagram doesn't show it, but there's a little sphincter right there. Uh, sphincters open and close to let things in and out. There's a nice little sphincter there called the esophageal sphincter and then the food enters the stomach. So what does the stomach do? Um, it stores and churns food around. Uh, it's, there's a chemical called pepsin, an enzyme that's released that helps digest specifically protein. There's hydrochloric acid that breaks up food and kills germs. Um, those are th just three things that the stomach does. There's some other things that we'll mention. So after the stomach turns things around, digests some of the proteins, um, then the, the, book, the chyme, now it's called, it's no longer called, um, no longer called a bolus, it's called chyme now. It leaves the stomach. There's a little sphincter right there too called the pyloric sphincter. Leaves the, leaves the stomach and heads through the small intestine. The first part of the small intestine right there is called the duodenum. And if you notice, it's the duodenum that where the pancreas, the liver, and the gallbladder all em empty their contents right there at the duodenum. The liver, in this digestive function anyway, secretes, produces bile, 
bile is stored in the gallbladder, and then bile is released into the GI tract in the duodenum. The pancreas, which is in blue there, um, secretes various hormones. So the ones that, I, that you're responsible for are lipase, which breaks down uh, fats, amylase, which breaks down starch. Notice that amylase is both released by the pancreas and by the salivary glands. Trypsin and chemotrypsin. Don't worry about trypsin and chemotrypsin. They are, um, they are uh, you can call them proteases together. So they help to further break down proteins. So proteases, amylase, and lipase are produced by the uh, pancreas and released into the GI tract. So now the chyme is getting more and more broken down as, as it moves along. So it keeps moving. And during, in the small intestine is where the absorption takes place. There's some other enzymes that are released in the small intestine, um, uh, but don't don't worry about that. There's there's uh, sucrases which digest uh, suc sucrose, um, and there's some other enzymes that are released there in the small intestine as well. But primarily, the small intestine is responsible for absorbing nutrients. Okay, so then the um, the uh, nutrients are absorbed into the blood in the small intestine, and then all the stuff that's left over is going to continue along. There's a little uh, sphincter right there at the, um, it's called the cecum, which is the first part of the large intestine. There's a little, um, you can see a little floppy thing hanging off there, that's the appendix. And then by this time, um, feces it has started uh, to be formed in the, in, the, in the large intestine. So this is all going to be eliminated, right? Uh, and so the feces start to form and uh, water is getting uh, absorbed right there in the large intestine as the feces move along. They, it moves to the uh, ascending colon, which goes up, the transverse colon, which goes across, and the descending colon, which goes down. And then by the time it gets there, it's ready to be expelled from the body in the form of feces. So that's in a nutshell. Uh, there are a few things on this diagram that we uh, won't talk about and a few things that are not on this diagram that we will talk about. So it doesn't cover everything, but um, it's a lot of information on that one diagram. So what happens to carbohydrates as they move through the digestive system? So you have your polysaccharides, right, like starch. Polysaccharides, remember, polysaccharides also include fiber, right, but fiber is not actually digested as it moves along. Fiber goes out with the feces, right? You don't digest any fiber, which is one reason why fiber is so good for you, because it doesn't, um, it adds bulk to your stool, um, but it doesn't actually add any, any um, calories because it doesn't get digested and absorbed. But the polysaccharides that do get digested and absorbed, namely starch, the digestion begins in the mouth as amylase is released from the salivary glands, continues in the duodenum as amylases are released from the pancreas. These uh, amylases break down the polysaccharide or the starch into disaccharides and then the disaccharides are broken down in the small intestine by enzymes released from the small intestine and are broken down into monosaccharides. When they get to be monosaccharides, they are absorbed into the blood. So this is the process of digestion in, um, uh, according to the uh, polysaccharide. Protein digestion, uh, gastric um, hydrochloric acid unravels the protein and proteases digest protein uh, into amino acids, which are absorbed into the villi. So these are just enzymes that are secreted um, in the stomach, but also in the uh, small intestine, these proteases. And they break down the protein into its component amino acids. I'm not going to hold you responsible for the different kinds. Uh, pepsin is a protease that's released in the stomach. You do need to know that one. Um, and then uh, 
other other proteases are secreted by the pancreas um, or by the duodenum itself. Okay, fats are uh, broken down. The uh, digestion according to fat. Fat is uh, likes to is insoluble in water, and therefore it likes to hang out in giant globules. So these globules need to be broken up into smaller globules. And what actually does that form of mechanical digestion is bile. So bile breaks down the fat into uh, smaller uh, fat globules. And then the lipases, which are the actual enzymes that break the bonds in the fat molecule, can actually go to work um, and break down the molecules themselves. So these are lipases um, that are released from the pancreas. So what you end up with is fatty acids. Uh, that are absorbed into the lymphatic system. We're going to talk about the lymphatic system more in class, um, but fats are absorbed into the lymphatic system. Okay, and some other molecules are absorbed as is without being digested, vitamins, minerals, and water to mean a few. All right, so that's the digestive system in a nutshell. Uh, we're going to go over the different parts of the digestive system again, and uh, what um, their functions are and what kinds of enzymes are released in each uh, part of the GI tract. All right, the respiratory system. So uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful animation um, of the respiratory system. So it'll give you a nice overview of how the respiratory system works. So please watch this video. Um, so after watching the video, you should have a pretty good idea of how the respiratory system works. Um, I think it's one of the best videos that, um, that we have available. Um, it, it's, uh, it's, it has great um, graphics and everything, so hopefully you um, got a lot out of watching that. So this is uh, just a diagram of the, of the respiratory system. So the respiratory system, of course, includes the, um, the trachea, which is the, um, which is at the uh, top part of the diagram in the throat. The uh, trachea, um, notice it is, it is covered with rings of cartilage, which actually keep it nice and open, otherwise it would collapse. Um, and then the trachea branches into what are called bronchi. And then the bronchi, which is like the fork in the road right there, right? The bronchi branch into um, what are called bronchioles, and eventually they terminate in these tiny little balloons that we call alveoli, which we'll talk about in a minute and which they discussed in the video. All right. So as the bronchi branch into bronchioles and then eventually into alveoli, this is how um, each uh, of the bronchioles terminate. So they terminate in these little grape-like clusters. You can think of them as little balloons called alveoli. Notice that the alveoli are surrounded by um, capillaries, right? So just to revisit the capillary for a minute, you've got blood coming in, that's what the arrow is for, from um, the heart now, okay, because we already covered blood flow through the heart, so you should realize that that blood is coming uh, from the heart to uh, pick up, pick up um, oxygen. Uh, the way this diagram is constructed, it's uh, the, the, it should, really shouldn't be red. It should actually be blue on that side and red on the other side, but that's okay. So, um, so the, the blood is coming from the heart and it's going to the capillaries and then the capillaries are picking up um, oxygen and dropping off carbon dioxide right there at the alveoli, right there at those little balloons because the alveoli themselves are only like one cell thick and the capillaries are only one cell thick. So this makes it easy for them to do gas exchange right there. And then the blood flows back uh, to the heart now that it's picked up oxygen. Um, and uh, now that, that oxygen then of course is going to be distributed to the cells so that the cells can make ATP. Okay, so this kind of summarizes the whole picture in a very nice way. Um, so over there on the left, we'll revisit blood flow through the heart a little bit. And remember that um, blood returns to the right side of the heart 
via the inferior and superior vena cava and then flows into the uh, right atrium and then the right ventricle. And now it's going to leave the right ventricle via the pulmonary arteries. They're arteries because they're carrying blood away from the heart. This is deoxygenated blood because it just came back from the body and it's heading to the lungs to get oxygen. So that's the, the left side of the diagram. Now we're going to follow the arrow to the middle part of the diagram. Don't worry about the pressures uh, where it says PO2 and PCO2. That's just telling you basically the um, concentration of uh, oxygen versus carbon dioxide. So we already know, all you have to know, you don't have to know the numbers, all you have to know is that the blood that's leaving the heart is low in oxygen. You don't have to know any numbers or anything like that. Okay, so it, it's low in oxygen. It gets to the lungs. It gets to the, uh, the capillaries, right? And this is where it picks up oxygen from the alveoli and drops off carbon dioxide, the waste product that it picked up from the cells of the body. So when it leaves the alveoli now, the oxygen levels are much higher and the CO2 levels are lower because it just dropped off CO2 and picked up oxygen. Okay, now it's going back to the heart. So that's the right side of the diagram. Where is it going to return to the heart? It's going to return to the left side of the heart via the pulmonary veins. It's going to flow from the atrium to the ventricles. And then it's going to leave the heart via the aorta. Okay, so then the blood is going to leave the through the aorta. It still has a lot of oxygen in it. It's going to deliver all that oxygen to the cells of the body. Okay, it's going to pick up carbon dioxide as a waste product of cellular respiration or ATP synthesis that occurs in the cells. And then that CO2 is going to get transported into the blood and back to the heart again and the whole system starts all over. So the heart pumps blood to the lungs to get oxygen and drop off carbon dioxide and the, the, then it goes, then the blood returns to the heart and then the heart pumps the blood to the tissues so that the tissues can get oxygen and get rid of their carbon dioxide. And this is the um, cycle that occurs. And remember that oxygen is needed so that the cells can make ATP. This is just showing you gas exchange at the lungs. Um, at the lungs, of course, carbon dioxide is leaving, so that is what you breathe out. When you breathe out, you breathe out carbon dioxide. When you breathe in, you are taking oxygen out of the blood. Incidentally, what also leaves uh, when you breathe out is um, water. You lose a little water, too, that way, through the, through the lungs. At the tissues, oxygen moves from the blood to the tissues, carried by, of course, red blood cells. Remember, red blood cells carry oxygen. CO2 moves from the tissue to the blood. So we already discussed this. And CO2 is not is just dissolved. Um, it, it's just dissolved in the um, in the plasma. It is not necessarily attached. It's not attached to the to the red blood cells. Okay, so in summary, uh, you should know for next class the basic structures and functions of the GI tract as we discuss them, um, and also um, what happens to uh, the various macromolecules as they get broken down. So what happens to polysaccharides, what happens to fats, what happens to proteins, uh, which enzymes are involved, and where are they released from. Um, you should also, for the respiratory system, you just need to know the basic structures and functions um, and especially emphasize how gas is exchanged at the alveoli and also how gas is exchanged at the tissue level. So once the um, oxygen is brought to the tissues, you should know that oxygen is dropped off at the tissues and carbon dioxide is picked up from the tissues. All right, that concludes this mini lecture. See you in class.